All right, so let's continue with chapter four and we'll go into the muscles of chapter four. So five muscles are primarily involved in shoulder girdle movements. They all originate on the axial skeleton, insert on the scapula and slash or the clavicle. Do not attach to the humerus and do not cause shoulder joint actions. Essential in providing dynamic stability of the scapula so it can serve as a relative base of support for the shoulder joint activity such as throwing, batting, and blocking. So these are some good points about the muscles of the shoulder girdle. Scapular muscles important in spinal posture. Forward shoulder is due to scapular protractors and depressors becoming stronger and tighter and retractors becoming weaker. Uh, contribute to kyphosis. Uh, less functional position for the glenohumeral joint. Important to maintain lumbar lordosis and keep the head over the trunk in a balanced position. Good posture enhances respiration. Inspiration. Scapular winging, relatively rare, but can affect normal function activity of the upper extremity. Most commonly affects the serratus anterior, leading to medial winging when pushing forward or raising the arm. Serratus anterior weakness or paralysis is typically due to injury of the long thoracic nerve, which may become from a variety of causes. Uh, so this is definitely on the uh, quiz. Much less common, much less commonly, the trapezius and slash or rhomboid may be affected, leading to lateral winging. I don't know why it says slash. Um, this should be slash as in a slash in the uh, interpreted. So there's no muscle called slash. It should be actually a slash. <laughs> uh, so here's scapular uh, winging, weakness in scapular cause. So that's what scapular winging, that's weakness in the serratus anterior. Okay. And then here's the injury in football where he actually injured the long thoracic nerve. You can see this side is normal but the long thoracic nerve on this side is injured, so it causes the winging of the scapula. So whenever you see that on a, a patient or athlete, you need to work the serratus anterior. So here are the muscles. So here's the scapula, okay? So in order for it to go up, that's gonna be rhomboids and traps, upper and middle, and then the levator is gonna bring it up. Rhomboids, middle and uh, lower trap is gonna bring it retraction forward is going to be serratus anterior pec minor traps lower trap and pectoralis minor will also bring it down trapezius middle and lower will cause this rotation upward rotation downward rotation or rhomboids and pec minor so this is a great way to kind of see and here's a good uh, reference point this is elevation this is a deduction app Reduction, depression, upward rotation, downward rotation. So use this as a guide and then know what muscles will do what. And those are excellent quiz questions. Okay, remember this is a movement anatomy class. We're concerned about what muscles are active during certain movements so we can pinpoint it and help our athletes and clients. So here's the serratus anterior. Again, you think about this, and from anatomy class, you would have had to memorize origin, insertion, nerve supply. You don't have to do that. You just have to tell me location and actions in movement anatomy. You should know the origin and insertion, but I'm not gonna quiz you on origin insertion because that's anatomy 101. Um, so here's the pectoralis minor, abduction, downward rotation and depression, subclavius does depression. Here's the traps and the posterior. You got upper fibers, elevation, extension of the head, middle fibers, elevation, abduction, and upper rotation, lower fibers, adduction, depression, and upper rotation. Okay. Rhomboids, adduction, downward rotation, and elevation, and levator scap does elevation. So knowing the actions of all these muscles is what you really want to uh, know, and that's what you study for this exam and for this class. Now, as far as nerves are concerned, uh, again, this goes back to anatomy, but you should know which basic nerves uh, do what. So shoulder girdle muscles are primarily innervated by the cervical and the brachial plexus. Um, so anatomy, you probably had to draw the brachial plexus. So it's a group of nerves that innervates the upper extremities. Um, so you look at some of these, here's the dorsal, so C4, C5, C6, C7, C8. Remember you have seven cervical, um, but you actually have eight cervical uh, nerves here. Here's the dorsal scapular nerve, 
scapular nerve. Um, they C5, 6, and 7 will form a certain chord. Again, going back and looking at this, now you're thinking, oh, man, this is pretty complicated. You probably have to review your brachial plexus. I'm not, again, it's not an anatomy class where I'm going to ask you specifically what are the branches, what are the chords and the roots, but you should know which nerve is innervated by which uh, muscle to a certain extent that if something is damaged, and I'll mention it and I'll highlight it so you, you can pay attention to that, but don't don't feel like you have to learn the brachial plexus again. You should be familiar with it, but I'm not going to ask specifically uh, specific questions on the brachial plexus. Um, so branches of C3 and C4, that's the trap and levator, okay? The spinal accessory nerve, that's trap. So dorsal scapular nerve, levator, and rhomboid. So a good question on the quiz, I could say, is a um, overhead athlete, such as a pitcher or a thrower, has damage to their dorsal scapular nerve, which muscles may be affected or which action may be affected, right? So knowing the muscle and actions uh, would be important. The long thoracic nerve originates from C5, C6, and C7, which is serratus anterior. The medial pectoral nerve originates from C8 and T1, that's pec minor. Here's your trap. Again, here's the origin and here's the insertion. So origin, insertion. Okay. What does the levator scap muscle do? It elevates the medial margin of the scapula. It's a weak downward rotator and a weak a, a deductor. Okay, and there's the origin insertion. Again, don't worry too much about origin insertion, but you still need to know that I'm more concerned about the actions here. Rhomboids, uh, rhomboid muscle and minor muscles work together. A deduction, retraction, draw the scapula toward the spinal column. Downward rotation. From upward rotated position, they draw the scapula in. Downward rotation causes elevation, slight upward movement accompanying a deduction. So again, the rhomboid muscles, what do they do? Uh, not so much the origin and insertion, but make sure you know what they do and what action they have on the scapula. Serratus, probably one of the most important muscles. This is definitely beyond the quiz. Uh, abduction, protraction, draws the medial border of the scapula away from the vertebrae. Upward rotation, longer lower fibers tend to draw the inferior angle of the scapula further away from the vertebrae, thus rotating the scapula upward slightly. Um, so this is a great muscle. I call this a Bruce Lee muscle. Uh, if you look at Bruce Lee, I mean, he had the one inch punch, but look at his serratus. Ah, that's great. And these are lats right here, but his serratus is unreal. So the serratus uh, allows him to do that one inch punch. Obviously the power came mostly from his hips, but that little bit of protraction is all serratus. Uh, pec minor, if you have tightness in your pec minor, you might get uh, rounded shoulders. Uh, you get abduction, protraction, draws the scapula forward and tends to tilt the lower border away from the ribs. It's a downward rotator. As it abducts, it draws the scapula downward. Depression, when it <laughs> the scapula is rotated upward, it assists in depression. Subclavius, this is an interesting muscle, it's just underneath the clavicle. Stabilization and protection of the sternoclavicular joint, depression, abduction. Here's the scapular abduction. Scapula moves laterally away from the spinous process without rotation. So scapular abduction would be a push-up and bench press. That's scapular abduction. So the agonist would be pectoralis main, minor and serratus anterior. So knowing, okay, what's an example of a movement that causes scapular abduction? And then what are the agonists is the way that you would study that. So remember, push-ups and bench press, pec minor, serratus, scapular abduction. Scapular adduction is, occurs with retraction, squeezing your shoulder blades together. What does that? Middle trap, lower trap, and rhomboids. Okay, so if you have forward shoulders, you're going to want to work middle trap, lower trap, and rhomboids to get those shoulders back, scapulas back. Upward rotation, what causes upward rotation? Your middle trap, lower trap, and serratus. What causes downward rotation? Pectoralis minor and rhomboids. So if what you can think is that, okay, if a, a patient or a client is not able to do upward movement, then what's going to be tight? 
All right. So what's going to be uh, weak? So weakness would be in the middle trap, lower trap, and serratus. But since if their downward rotators are trite, such as the rhomboids and pectoralis minor, then the MO, I might not be able to upwardly rotate. So knowing what's weak and knowing what's right. So you want to strengthen weak muscles and you want to stretch tight muscles. Scapular elevation, lifting the scapula without rotation in anatomical position, like a shoulder shrug. What does shrugs? Levator, upper trap, middle trap, and rhomboids. Scapular depression, that would be in a dip. So remember I showed you um, if you're sitting on a chair, just push yourself up, and that's lower trap and pec minor. So you really want to work those lower traps. And now if we look at, uh, you guys did some awesome EMG studies. Uh, um, and each EMG has its own limitations. Most of them, they don't really have a lot of um, uh, participants, so they're limited. But I've actually looked at some of those and I found, I kind of picked up the, the best ones here. So if you look at upper trap, we want to do rack pulls, upper trap, uh, barbell shrugs, middle trap, I like the prone reverse flies, lower trap, you got the prone Ys, okay? Uh, rhomboids, rows, pull-ups, rhomboids, chest supported rows, and the best grip seems to be a thumbless grip, uh, wide and pronated for the shoulder girdle, okay? Um, yeah, let's look at some exercises and let's look at some videos here. Here's some websites. The Wheelis textbook of orthopedics is a good one. And it's baseball almanac. Here's some, just some good uh, websites that you can look at. Um, diagnose treatment of snapping scapula, sternoclavicular joint injuries, AC joint injuries, AC joint injuries, 